Well, let's get in Peter then without any delay. Uh, Peter uh, Maguire of Exam Australia is joining in. Hi, good morning, Peter. Good to have you in the studios. Tell us about your stay in India. How are you enjoying it? Well, good morning, Nandita. I tell you what, it's a fantastic city. I'm in <laughs> love with the place. I've been here many times. I've got great friends, but more importantly, the vibrancy and certainly the energy, you can't miss that. And the infrastructure, you're looking at, um, you know, rail systems, highways, you know, new roadways. It really is quite, it's a transformation and India's got, um, it's coming up the curve quickly. Right, well, I'm happy that you're enjoying your stay. Well, let's get on uh, on the subject then. You know, gold has been shining bright ever since the sure. uh, US uh, banking turmoil broke out. We saw uh, the yellow metal go above that $2,000 mark amid safe haven demand. Now, IMF has also given a warning that, you know, this US banking crisis poses uh, some serious risk to uh, global growth, right? So sure. do you think gold is headed higher towards that 2100 per dollar mark, isn't it getting too expensive to actually get into gold right now? Well, I'll tell you what, I think there's, a, there's been a big push as far as retail demand and certainly for the precious metal itself, not the paper market, but the actual buying of physical gold and it's been very strong and silver, don't forget. Hmm. So that overall picture I think is going to increase as far as demand over the rest of this year and certainly into 24. There's a lot of global uncertainty hmm. and the appetite across young people and certainly all ages hmm. but are really attracted to the yellow, yellow metal and uh, I think that that's, that's best years are ahead of it. Right. You know, uh, Peter, if the, the FOMC minutes are going to be released tonight and, yeah. you know, if the Fed signals that the next 25 basis point rate hike would be the last one, then, uh, you know, where do you expect gold to, gold to head then around this year, later this year? Well, I, I still believe that there'll be stronger demand because mm -hmm. quite simply... Uh, there's a lot of uncertainty moving forward as far as, yes, the inflation story, but is it really going to be under control with food prices and energy prices? And there's, there seems to be a flight to a little bit of safety. And I, you're looking at the dollar, you're looking at the currencies being very volatile. The overall picture, I think, is going to be stronger for gold and stronger for silver. So there's been underinvestment in silver, and I really think that, again, it's, uh, it's got some good times ahead of it. Mm. Are we looking at $30 on silver anytime soon? Yeah, look, it's been there before and I think it's got plenty of upside yet. Mm. I think it's still ridiculously cheap. Mm. And uh, once, once it rises and once it goes on a big rally, it's had a good rally anyway from 18 to 25 bucks. But I think it's got a lot further to run. And yeah, 30s are very achievable. Right, 30 is achievable. Let's also talk about steel. You know, we had China inflation data coming out sure. yesterday. It's at 18 month lows. And you know, the demand from China when it comes to steel hasn't really picked up. So in that sense, where do you expect steel prices to head now? Well, you know, steel's interesting because you've had such a big build as far as the building industry and construction industry for really decades in China. And we've still got issues there as far as the property sector. So uh, maybe it's at a point in time that there just hasn't been strong demand externally as far as globally. For steel, you only got to look at, I'm sure there's plenty of steel demand in Mumbai, mm. <laughs> but when you're looking at China, uh, there's a position there that I would say it's probably take a few more months and still, until things really start to ratchet back mm. up. We're post-COVID now and probably it's a bit early to call. So, yeah, don't worry too much about steel demand. I think it's going to be strong over the next couple of years in China. Right. Uh, you know, you spoke about dollar. Uh, do you expect that to ease given the fact that you know, we are nearing that uh, uh, rate hike cycle when it comes to Fed? You know, we've seen Co Bank of Korea hold rates. We've seen RBI, yeah. the Indian Central Bank, hold rates. We've seen Australia, Australia. itself uh, uh, hold rates. So given the fact that, you know, the global uh, rate hike cycle is nearing its end, mm -hmm. where do you expect the dollar to head from here? Do you expect yeah. below 100 levels now? Yeah, it's around about that 102 sort of handle at the moment for the US dollar index. It's a market that I look at. The first market I look at each day is that mm -hmm. particular one before I go online and check to see <laughs> as far as currencies and everything else, because it gives a true picture right. what's going on. Uh, yeah, I won't be surprised to see a little bit further structural weakness. I'm not sure whether you'll see under 100 in the next, you know, really quickly this month, but I think it's probably, you know, that 101, 10150 sort of number mm. over the next couple of weeks. I won't be surprised if it hits that. Right, you know, I can't not ask you about crude. Sure. Uh, $85 or thereabouts right <laughs> now on the Brent. 
uh, you know, surprise output cut by OPEC plus. But, you know, do you expect more output cuts going forward given the fact that, you know, we can expect some slowdown in demand since IMF has also red flagged uh, global growth mm. now? Look, we, uh, I was in Dubai on mm. last Sunday week and I didn't expect, and I don't think many analysts did expect m much change as far as policy from OPEC plus. And it really hit the ball out of the park. So it was a massive hit. It was a six. And I think really the, the fundamentals, if that's how they're prepared to roll, and obviously they control the crude supply, so if that's how they're ready to roll, then I won't be surprised to see further cuts. And maybe that's going to be evident probably mm. in third quarter. Right, if more cuts, then we can expect $100 anytime oh, soon? Well, unfortunately, you're going to see higher prices. The producers mm. are really happy about this, and that, that flows into dollar, and that flows into, of course, the other side, which is sure. inflation. Sure. You know, uh, let's also touch upon Bitcoin. I don't know whether, whether you track oh, that or not. I sure do. Since that's November. above thirty thousand dollars once again. Yeah. So you know, uh, where do you expect that to head? Picking up from here, will, will this rally pick up steam? Thirty-five thousand, forty thousand well, anytime I, soon? I go back to November and it was at fifteen thousand three hundred or something. So mm. you're up nearly a hundred percent since November. So let's not kid ourselves. This is a raging bull market. Has it got more upside? Yeah. Don't get in the way of something like this. I'm not sure how much further it runs in this cycle but hey it's strong and there's plenty of demand again with young people and right. with alternatives decentralized versus centralized yeah i think that there's again good times ahead for certainly right, we've the crypto. seen levels of sixty thousand on crypto yeah, well, anyway that's right. so <laughs> it's a long way off 60 but it's a yeah. long way up from 15. that's true that's true peter with that i really appreciate you taking out time and joining us in the studios uh, uh, this morning i hope the rest of the state turns out to be pretty uh, you know of pleasant for you as Thank well. And you. I hope you enjoy the food here in Mumbai. I certainly do. Thanks, Nandita. Thanks a lot, Peter, for joining in.